Uh, so we agree transition metals have variable oxidation states. They, f they form complex ions. Now the next item I'd like to talk about is color of complex ions or transition metals. If you look at transition metals and you see they will give you wonderful different colors. The question is where does the color come from? Uh, it is the transition between D and D orbital electrons. Some of white light is absorbed and that's not the color you see and the complementary or leftover of the white light is the color that is being reflected. So in case of cobalt 2 plus if you see red that means green has been absorbed. Now let's look at that uh, in detail why transition metals are colored. There are uh, a series of uh, three justification that you need to go through and spell it out. When the transition metal is isolated, when there is no ligands in the vicinity, the d orbitals, which you have five of them, are going to be in the same energy level, potential energy, and they are known as degenerate. So if this is the axis of energy and it's increasing, they are exactly the same level. Now when a ligand approaches the d uh, orbitals, due to negative charges that they carry, both ligands and the orbital is a negative electron holder, two of these uh, orbitals are along the axis and they get repelled by the ligand. And what happens is they create two distinctive energy level. Three of the d orbitals stay as is and two of them will move up. And they separate and now there is a, there is a distance and there is a change in elect, um, energy level of them. What happens if if you have, and, and that's the most important criteria is the last one, if you are partially filled, meaning you are not completely empty or completely filled up, if you are partially filled, uh, then there is possibility for white light to come through. Now remember white light is combination of all colors. It will come through and it will get one of these electrons excited and that electron will go up here. So after what you see is you will see your five orbitals. Now one of the electrons was promoted going up and now from this white light there is some leftover that comes to you. So this will be the leftover. Color, I call it leftover but it's really complementary color that is seen. So some is absorbed, some light is absorbed. To make that transition between D electron to D electron and then the complementary color is what you are going to see. Now let's just look at one example, titanium 3. The question is why is it purple? So first thing I do is I look at electron configuration of titanium. Uh, titanium by itself is argon 4s2 uh, 3d2. Now titanium 3 plus is when you lose 4s first so 4s is completely empty and 3d is 1. Since it's partially filled, it should be colored. So what happens is now your d orbitals, d4, are here and you simply have one electron. After a ligand approaches, these d orbitals are going to split into two energy levels. Now in case of titanium, what we are going to do is we are going to borrow the red, the yellow, the green from white light. It's going to be absorbed. And the leftover, which is the combination of the other colors, complementary color, in terms of purple, comes out. So this is light going through. And from that, you are absorbing red, orange, yellow. And what comes out is light uh, transmitted, which is in terms of a uh, Roy GB blue, indigo, violet combination of these three is a purple color that you see. So one part of color chemistry is transition metal colors. You have to remember it. Uh, the D orbitals at beginning are degenerate. They have the same energy. When ligand approaches them, two of them will move up. Now there is a difference in energy. And if you have 
one electron or or just partially filled electrons is not completely filled up that electron will absorb some of the white light to get excited and grow up and you will have complementary color as color of transition metals.